and I simply remove the telephone jack and plug it into this box here, the modem. I then take another wire from the modem and plug it in where the telephone was. I can then switch on the modem. It's now telling me to phone up the main Presell computer. So it's a very simple connection to make. Extremely simple. I'm now waiting for the computer to answer me. And... Things are starting to happen. Things are starting to happen. Why did you buy a computer? Well, I was very interested in the new technology and didn't want to be left behind. I don't think it's only for the youngsters at school now. I think us older ones will have to learn a lot about it. What, what is internet that, anyway? Internet is uh, that massive computer right. network, mm -hmm. the one that's becoming really big now. What it's, do you mean? That's big? How does one, what do you write to it, like mail? No, a lot of people use it and communicate. With, I guess they can communicate with NBC writers and producers. Allison, can you explain what internet is? The world is in financial disarray. Currencies failing, economies in wild flux, jobs being lost. But what if you could build an entirely new economy, one specifically designed for the digital realm? Well, that is the dream behind Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin, uh, for those of you who don't know, is an electronic online currency that was created in 2009. Uh, it was made by someone who did it under the pseudonym Satoshi Nakamoto. Like any economy, you don't want too much too fast because then the value of your currency drops or so slow that your economy grounds to a halt. It's designed to be a self-stabilising economy. Whether it actually is that way though, well that is a little bit more complicated. Because some people have said, hey, Bitcoin is the answer to those problems. Are you a believer? Well, Bitcoin is exciting because it shows how cheap it can be. Uh, Bitcoin is, is better than currency in that uh, you don't have to ha be physically in the same place. And, of course, for large transactions, currency can, can get pretty inconvenient. And what is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is a currency on the Internet. I sent 100 euros worth of Bitcoin from here in Tokyo directly to you guys through this camera, through the network, through the TV, right into your home. If I had tried to do that, send you the money with a traditional bank, it would have taken several days and probably cost 30 euros. I just did it right now with Bitcoin instantly, basically for free, and didn't have to ask anybody for permission. I didn't need a bank, I didn't need a government, I didn't need anybody. I just needed myself and you and our smartphones to do it. That's the power of Bitcoin. Wall Street is fraud, America is fraud, the world is fraud, banks are fraud, central banks are fraud. We live in an era of fraud. It's all based on fraud, and they get a percentage of the fraud. That's the business model. To suggest that there is any moral or ethical aspect to anything that's going on now is to be completely naive about the fact that we live in an era dominated by financial terrorists. Terrorists, terrorists, jihadis of banking. They're here to kill you and themselves. They believe in an ideology, not the Koran, but Adam Smith, that they completely misread and interpret as something to justify their blowing themselves up. Jenny Yellen's a terrorist! Mario Draghi's a terrorist! The Central Bank of Japan is a terrorist! These are the real terrorists! Funds received. This community is switching to what they think is a better monetary system. A system in which banks are no longer needed because payments could be made directly from one person to another. Bitcoin is fundamentally different because in Bitcoin you don't owe anyone anything and no one owes you anything. It is not a system based on that. It is a system based on ownership. And no one can censor it, no one can seize it, no one can freeze it. It's November the 2nd, 2008, just six weeks after the Lehman Brothers collapse. And all over the world there are panicked debates about how to save the banks. Then, on a little visited web forum for cryptographers, a document appears in which a completely new monetary system is proposed. The visionary author calls himself Satoshi Nakamoto. These were the darkest days of the financial crisis. So that to me suggests a very clever mind uh, that saw an opportunity, the perfect opportunity to introduce a new radical technology and a new radical approach to money and finance at just the right moment when people would be very open to making this big shift 
that's required to adopt a new currency. What's exciting for me is like a global economy. Right now we say we have a global economy, but I can't take a dollar and give it to you in the Netherlands and then you know what to do with it, right? You would have to go and change it to your native currency. Um, and when you kind of eliminate that step and I can just send you one form of payment and you can send me a product in a matter of seconds, that starts to change things from a from a global perspective. How could this digital coin invented by this Satoshi Nakamoto become hundreds of times more valuable than the dollar? And why do enthusiasts like Roger Fear want the world to switch to bitcoins? I'm giving every, every single person here 1,000 yen worth of bitcoins, which is like $8 and something cents. Back in the early days, you know, I'd get phone calls from my buddies, oh, hey man, I lost 10,000 bitcoins because my computer blew up, right? Back then, one Bitcoin was less than a penny, right? So nobody cared. They lost $10. I don't care, right? And now 10,000 Bitcoins, that's you know, $5 million. That's a big deal, right? I think a lot of people are underestimating the way in which Bitcoin and the blockchain are going to change the power structures in society in general. I mean, I grew up in the U.S. and uh, I see all these people like, yeah, nuke everybody in the Middle East and kill them all. And then they have the former Secretary of State, Madeleine Albright, on 60 Minutes, one of the most popular news shows in the U.S. And they asked her, they said, like, there's reports that more than half a million Iraqi children have died as a direct result of U.S. sanctions. And she looks back at her with a straight face and she goes, it was a really tough decision but I think that it was worth it. Worth murdering half a million kids because of what the government did? And I apologize for crying, but it just disgusts me from my core when I see government people murdering people around the world. It's not just theoretical. These are real people with real lives. And it's real people. And Bitcoin has the power to undermine everything they're doing to people around the world. And I'm sorry for shouting, but it just disgusts me what these people in government do. And they do it through central banking and through the control of the money supply, and Bitcoin takes that away from them. You can buy Bitcoin at the Shell station. Check it out. Good. Got two dollars. Hit finish. Oh. $2 in Bitcoin, just like that, <laughs> from this machine. I just turned cash into digital currency. <laughs> so thinking that, that it's too late to get involved in Bitcoin is like thinking it's too late to get involved with the internet or too late to get involved with using a cell phone. Like, it's not too late to get involved in Bitcoin. If Bitcoin becomes really popular all over the world, Bitcoins are gonna have to be worth at least tens of thousands of dollars of Bitcoin, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars per, per Bitcoin. So, Thinking it's too late to get involved with, with Bitcoin is like thinking it's too late to get involved with, with using the internet. Of course not. Like it, it's ubiquitous in our lives and Bitcoin's going to become ubiquitous in our lives as well.